What's going on? Anybody had a committee meeting from the chambers yet? Welcome to the meeting of the, Econ of the Community Development and Urban Planning Committee. Uh, we are doing an in-person as well as a virtual meeting today. This is our first meeting after our summer break. Uh, we have a few agenda items and at this time I would like the members of the committee to please introduce themselves and then the other council members that are present um, can go ahead and proceed to introduce yourselves. Councilwoman Zanthi Alva, 3rd District. Councilwoman Brigida Fields, 5th District. Councilwoman Shanae Darby, 2nd District. Councilmember Yolanda McCoy, 6th District. At this point, any other council members that are not part of the committee, um, you can introduce yourselves. Michelle Harley, representing 4th District. Tripping Congo Council President. Okay, and Council Member Spadola has been excused from today's meeting. Okay, we are going to proceed with the first agenda item, which is Ordinance 21-038, an ordinance to amend Chapter 5 of the City Code to change the permissible hours of operation for certain retailers. Who would speak to this? Um, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, Councilwoman Zampia Oliver. Um, this is, as you stated, um, amending Chapter 5 to the City Code uh, to change operational stores from um, to um, between 10 to, to close at 10 o'clock. Uh, and my reasoning for this is I send an attachment. Um, from the law department and a little small synopsis. Um, if you look on the back of this paper, um, one of their, uh, look, I'm turning to the proper paper. One of the stipulations, if you, if you can look on page two, um, I sent it to everyone, it says, um, the store agrees to these measures to help uh, abate to identify nuisance actions. And the one that was most disturbing with most of these corner stores, um, uh, they were even bold enough to put, um, to stop selling single cigarettes to all. And we have a problem with these corner stores. They don't call them Lucy's. They, they go in there and say, might have a bubble gum. And, um, they are selling single cigarettes. Um, that's just one of them. But one of them, they also stated, if you look at page two, it says close the store at 10 o'clock for the summertime, as we promise until the crowd goes away. And my problem is that 
I'm not against corner stores. I go, um, I go to maybe one of them. I don't make it a habit because they milk our community. Um, they're open. Most of them open at six o'clock, close at one o'clock. They pack up and they don't live in a community. And just talking to, doing a survey, talking to a lot of seniors, the stores were never open that late uh, in the past. All the corner stores were re respectively closed at 10 o'clock. Um, so I'll wait till anybody have any questions. Uh, so that's my reasoning, but if you, Take the time to look at, like I said, look at page two. This is with this store and also, I don't have the information for 23rd Street right in front of me, but that's uh, what they're doing on 23rd and Pine also. And most of the stores that not that aren't nooses, they close up at 10 o'clock anyway, the corner stores. You, you can ride by, you can tell the difference. And it's just only in certain communities that we have all this activity, which causes laudering, and which causes shooting. Uh, Etc. So uh, it would be this uh, Pine Street store and uh, uh, Pine Street, North Pine Street, them are the stores that um, currently um, are really causing major problems because they're staying open at one o'clock. Um, the police are getting calls about the laudering, um, heavy um, crowds out there, as I said, laudering. And a whole lot of, uh, when, when anybody's staying out at the, standing at the store, as opposed to just going in the store and coming out, if you just stand around the store at 12 or one o'clock, eventually something is going to happen. Uh, um, I'll wait for anybody else to make some comments. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, could you give us the addresses of the, you said of the two stores? One was at, you said Pine? One is, um, I, I sent, I mean, I sent you the attachment. If you look in your email, I sent that attachment. Uh, it's it's uh, exactly 940 North Pine, and the other one would be 23rd and uh, 20, 20, 2300 North Pine. But the information I see that just popped up was 940 North Pine. 940 North Pine, and you said 23rd and Pine? Correct. North Pine, yeah. North Pine, okay, thank you. I if see you the check council... your emails, I sent you some Okay, well, for the public, the, the people that are watching, we want to make sure they understand the addresses that oh, we're talking about their neighborhoods. Um, <clears throat> Councilwoman Harley has her hand up. Proceed. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Council Member Oliver answered my question. I was going to ask, is this legislation addressed in the third district? And it sounds like it's just the two stores that she just mentioned. So she answered my question. Thank you. And Council Member Brigida Fields. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to know, um, well, she, um, Councilwoman Oliver answered my question, but is, are we looking at it going to other districts or can that um, council person um, ask for that to be in their district if other ones don't want it? You know what I mean? Like, can it go, like I want it in my, here's the thing. I want it in my district. I have a store right now on, um, Fourth and Monroe, it is a uh, liquor store, and they open up seven o'clock in the morning, and they close. They're supposed to close um, at a certain time, and they don't. But they have a lot of loitering. Um, it's a lot of drug dealing, and so on and so forth. And I would like to know if I could, you know, how how does it work? If it's just for the third district, how can I get it in the fifth district? That's my one question. Um, and my comment to what Councilwoman Oliver said, yeah, it is true. We have these corner stores, bodegas, they, they're, they're in our districts, they're in our neighborhoods. However, they do not give back to our neighborhoods. They don't live in our neighborhoods. Um, they overcharge the people that have EBT cards that don't, they don't have transportation to, um, to the grocery store or Walmart or Walgreens or whatever the case may be. Um, and like she said, they're selling Lucy's, they're selling um, vapors to the children. So I mean, I've, I've been watching this before I even became the council. So I'm glad that this, she brought this legislation up and I hope that we can get this passed and I hope that I can um, get this in my district as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Member Fields. I do wanna uh, note that uh, Council Member Nathan Field is with us in the meeting. 
At this point, we have uh, Council Member Yolanda McCoy and then Council President Congo. So we'll start with Council Member mm -hmm. McCoy. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So you know, when it came to the, um, the liquor store, the spirit stores, We've already had uh, legislation that actually talked about their hours, including giving them hours on Sunday. My question is, is whether or not this piece of legislation is going to be more so about dictating how many hours a day can they actually be of service or what time are they closing? Because I think that we may we may need to uh, like make certain that we're tightening some things up. If we're just wanting to make certain that we keep peace during a certain time frame, you know, um, if if the liquor store that uh, Brigitte is talking about may be open past uh, certain hours, that's definitely an issue. That's a that, that's definitely that's even against like our state laws, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we do. So, have no, I'm sorry. so the question is, I'm sorry. The question was basically whether or not how many hours are they allowed to be open on uh, on any given day. May I answer that, um, Madam Chair? Yes, please proceed. I'm looking at the old legislation was from 4 a.m. and the hours were uh, supposedly 12 a.m. So from 4 a.m. to 12 a.m. And now it looks like it could be from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, but just to piggyback off of um, with someone I said, most of them don't close until one o'clock. I mean, I've, I've observed it. The police have been out. That's why since all the members that are on the committee, most of these points um, are normally points because the stores have been open. This particular store has been open past 12 o'clock. So if they come out and they past 12 o'clock, um, they just get, you know, it's just a police call and they get a point. Um, it also shows the, uh, the negligent of abuse of some of these stores. And so what do they care after they made five to $6,000 a day to get a point and they know they have to be accumulated. So that's, that's, that's what I have to say about that. Okay. Um, may I, so, may I be, I think so I guess to your, your question, I'm sorry, it would be the hours of operation from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the evening. Okay, um, so may I, may I continue to ask another yes, question? Proceed. Okay, thank you. So actually, thank you for giving me that information. Uh, Councilwoman Oliver, uh, it was news to me that they can be uh, that they can be open that early. So they're allowed to be open for 20 hours out of the day? Exactly. Wow, yeah, I think that, yeah. Uh, now the thing is, I, I, of course, I do not want to see any business owner you know, lose out on money. But I think that um, in order to make certain that uh, there's peace and no loitering, things like that, there may need to take, uh, may need to make an adjustment. Do we know that these stores are actually, even though that they are available to be open at 4 a.m., are they open at 4 a.m.? Madam Chair, may I answer that? Yes, you may. Thank you. Um, from what I've observed um, from riding around with, um, city officials, um, most of them open up at five just to get prepared to mm -hmm. open up around six. So they're open up like 6 a.m. to one o'clock in the morning. And that's uh, wow. that was another thing that was bothering me. Um, you know, I wrote, and I also rode around in other communities and you, you know, you dare, you know, you haven't, you don't even see that type of activity. And that's why our numbers in certain areas uh, the crime is up because we don't put out any stipulations, and it just seems like nobody cares if it's if it's a high crime in certain areas, but it's not cr high crime in other areas. So I did take the liberty to ride around in other districts, and I see why because the the lights. I mean, nobody's hanging around. There's no stores with flashing lights are on at a certain time, um, and they have corner stores, but their corner stores. Um, have they close up at ten o'clock? I do see I do see stores in the neighborhoods, but they're not open up at um, eleven. Roll past that eleven. Uh, one night we roll past on the weekend at eleven, twelve. Even roll through at one. Coming from an event, no stores was open in that area. Come and ride in certain areas. 
11, 12, 1. I mean, it was one night, 12, it was like 1 30. It was riding around over, I'm not, you know, certain areas. I don't want to identify the areas, but I can say um, on the west side, over in Brown Town, over in North Side, over in the east side. Um, I only saw one store, I think, was in the first district, but they were closing up, and that was like around 10 30. Um, a court 11, but I'm just saying um, if, if it's not allowed or people don't do it in one district, I would, I, I, I don't want to see it in uh, our districts uh, in our communities that mm -hmm. they are just milking, you know, I went in and also want to mention that um, I was working with a ministry in Karen. I just found out that they were going in the store, the seniors going in the store and about four seniors. So um, brother Ron scheduled a meeting and, um, and um, and um, and Priscilla with the mayor because four seniors from Ministry Karen used the um, ATM machine and they were robbed and no one even mentioned it. I don't need uh, the, the, the security guard over there who's been a security guard older a gentleman for over forty years. He be you know he resigned. Um, just from the guys threatening him about his camera. He's like, it's not nothing even showed on the camera. The camera doesn't even go that far down the street. But them are the type of, that's the type of activity that's going on. And what's mind boggling is people who don't even live in the community. Thank you for that. Are there any other questions from council members before we proceed to questions from the public? I. Okay, I see uh, Council, uh, Council President Congo. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. what, what type of, uh, I'm sorry if I missed it, but what type of stores does this legislation speak to? And wouldn't it be citywide if it were to pass? I just want some clarity. Are, are, are we allowed to be selective about what stores? No, for this, the enforcement? no thank uh, Good question. No, this is for operation of retail stores and it doesn't have a restriction on what area. Okay, all right, okay, thank you. So if, if it were to pass, it would be citywide, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. If I could, um, do we have any, we don't see any hands, any members of the public <clears throat> that have their hand raised. Um, I wanted to mention here, if we look at page one of the legislation, it says your star, which is the strategically targeted area redevelopment or the residential improvement and stabilization effort rise. Um, so these are two programs that targeted certain areas in our city. Um, and when I recall when the changes were first made uh, for the problem or the nuisance properties that there was a, they call it the red line district. So they outline an area of the city where the businesses within that area had to close at a certain time. And then they were allowed to open up as early as 4 a.m. But I, from what I understand, they were not allowed to be open 24 hours and they had to shut down. I believe the time was midnight. So if what I'm seeing here is that we're targeting certain businesses had have proven to be problematic. They have high police calls, loitering, there's been shootings outside uh, or in the perimeter of that area that we're trying to cut down on that activity by having them close at 10 p.m. instead of midnight for those um, that are not closing at 10 p.m. So as a council, if we pass this, um, we would either have to specify the target area um, or does get changed citywide, which means that a business in any neighborhood would then have to follow by that. Um, so there might be some more questions around this as I understand it. But then again, if these businesses are in a residential area, we could say specifically that we're targeting businesses that are in a residential area because of the nuisance that they are creating. So certainly we want to introduce legislation that does not um, impose, infringe, or take the rights away from all businesses, since not all businesses are engaging or allowing this activity to take place. Um, so definitely, Councilman Oliver, we will uh, take a closer look at this. If there's any questions, um, you know, that we might have from the law department that could, um, you know, answer those for us. But for the most part, um, I do believe in the spirit of this legislation, and I think it is important that we uh, tackle 
these uh, nuisance businesses. And when it comes to the nuisance points, I think the most important thing is we have to make sure that the police are writing up the calls when they come in because that's the only way that the points are going to accumulate. If they just come and disperse the crowd and they're not getting written up, uh, getting a citation or written up for the actual loitering, then those points are not going to apply to the business. And as each month goes by, points drop off because they only stay there for a year. So in order to accumulate enough points to close down a business, it's got to be consistent. The calls for service have to be consistently reported. And uh, this is a conversation I had with the mayor yesterday on how do we deal with these problem properties and to make sure that the chief is, you know, in, you know, enforces that the police officers are writing them up and giving the citations and reporting the points. If the points are not being reported, then then why do we have that system in place? Anyone else, any other questions or comments? And as the sponsor, Councilman Oliver, if there's any wrap-up comments you'd like to make? No, we have John on the, um, with his hand up from the law department. Okay, John, please, if you can proceed, thank you. <clears throat> Hi there, can you guys hear me? I was on mute. Uh, so I wanted to clarify, and my apologies, I just received the, a map. So that would help a little bit more um, with Councilwoman Oliver's uh, presentation. Um, to clarify, as you, I think you hit the nail on the head, uh, Count, um, Madam Chairman, or Chairwoman, excuse me. These are specific neighborhoods. These are not all businesses throughout the city. Um, they do cross over Councilman and districts. So, uh, it's not specifically in Councilwoman Oliver's uh, district alone. Um, just kind of a short one, and I will have this map and I will distribute it to uh, council staff so that they can distribute it out to the members. Um, it does include kind of the Greater Brandywine Village, Hilltop East, West Center City, uh, kind of looks like Southbridge, uh, the East Side, Ashbury Heights, Christiana Gateway. So it doesn't, it crosses the targeted area. Um, is not the entire city, um, but specifically those uh, er, you know, those parts of the city that are part of an urban renewal plan or the strategic, excuse me, the strategically targeted area um, for redevelopment. So it does cross council manic districts. It's not citywide. Um, and we're not targeting you know, individual stores um, necessarily. Um, it just so happens that those star, those stores that the councilwoman addressed fall into these areas. Thank you for that explanation. I would like to follow up with a question. So to be specific, these two addresses that Councilman Oliver um, would like to make sure that they close at 10 p.m. instead of midnight. What, what are the current hours now? Is it 10 p.m. or is it midnight for those areas? Let's start with that question. As of today, those stores, if they're in that area, can remain open from 4 a.m. until 10 or to, until midnight. And most of them stay open to one. I'm sorry. Okay. So, putting forth this legislation, would it take place? Would the change then apply to all the businesses within that targeted area that you just spoke of, or can we? target one or two of the problem properties without it affecting the other properties that may not be open that late or if they are open they're not causing a nuisance in their neighborhood what what are what are our legalities i guess what are we allowed or not allowed to do so we cannot target individual stores um section 5-78 um little f is the is you know the part of the code that we're actually um targeting um, and it actually defines the kind the types of stores that would be affected excuse me excuse me I had to clear my throat um, so these would be this is a little bit of legal ease um, businesses of retailer edible or retailer non edible edible commodities or both any holder of a license for a gas station or auto repair facility in the target area, um, whether or not they're operated 
in conjunction with a edible commodities. That's just food that you can take away from the store or it's delivered or shall sell or deliver any goods, wares, merchandise, and personal property. So that this would affect many of the stores in the affected areas. Okay, thank you. I hesitate to say all, but many of them. Thank you for that extended uh, explanation. So with that said, um, Councilman Oliver, you are the sponsor. You're the last to speak. Um, My hand's up, Madam Chair. Miss Darby was next. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Took my glasses off and I cannot see. That's okay. okay. There we go. Councilwoman Darby, you can proceed and we have a few others. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I am in support of like the spirit of the legislation. Um, I'm all for, I'm really, my issue is the liquor stores, um, but I don't think this legislation addresses liquor stores, um, more of the corner stores. Um, and I do agree with changing the hours. However, I do want to point out that a lot of our community people use these corner stores to get milk, formula, diapers, different things at these corner stores. And if we close them at 10 and change the hours, a lot of people don't have cars or a quick run to go get something like I have like a car I can go run to the to the Walmart or the Walgreens down the street or in, a, in another neighborhood um so a lot of the community use these corner stores for a lot of their like necessities and needs so I also want to have that conversation too on like how do we couple legislation with making sure that we're being proactive about some of the things that we are taking from the community when we do change the hours to 10 o'clock it's like accessibility to like basic items and needs for households and taking care of their family. Um, but I am in support of like the spirit of the legislation, like changing hours of like nuisance properties, um, especially these liquor stores. I am all over them. Um, I have three in the um, between my district and two Miss Oliver district on Market Street. And I'm all for the legislation, but also thinking of how do we um, alleviate the, uh, the impact it may have on families who use the corner stores? Um, because nuisance properties, a lot of times, it's not like the whole neighborhood. It's usually a small, it's a small percentage of people who are standing out there causing a nuisance. And then what about the other people who aren't, who use that for their basic needs in their households? So just a thought to throw out there. Thank you, Thank Councilman you. Darby. Um, I'm going to proceed with Council Member McCoy. Oh, thank you. I just placed my hand up. I seen other hands are up, but um, my um, one of the things that I did notice is I'm checking out the hours of the stores that I have in my area. And um, this is not a brand new piece of legislation. Um, a councilman Oliver, she really wanted to make certain that everyone got a chance to talk to the store owners and such so we can kind of see what things were in our uh, specific neighborhoods in case it actually touched us. I'm not, I don't believe it really does, but I did make certain that I talked to those store owners. Um, actually, my uh, some of the stores that I have are already closing not as early but around that time frame i have a few stores that are closing at like 10 30 and i don't have issues with them at all but it seems that the ones who are closing 11 and past whatever may be the issue i didn't know whether or not would that given that extra hour may be something uh, to look at like closing at 11 making it you know whether or not uh that would be something that was that would help the, the people in the neighborhood, because we, uh, I've lost a grocery store in this area. So it is definitely um, an issue when it comes to making certain that uh, my residents um, are able to um, have access to, you know, different things. So I just want to make that statement. Thank you. And we'll proceed with council member fields. Council member okay. Thank you, madam chair. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, and I get where everybody is coming from as far as this is where some of our community members, you know, um, get their milk and pampers and household items. However, we definitely have to look at um, the, if they're, if they're a problem store, I, I thought that the legislation was only tackling 
those properties that were problems or that had um, a certain amount of points, um, nuisance points. So, I mean, if, if they close at 10 and they're doing what they're supposed to do, we're not even paying them any, we're not even bothering them. We're looking at the stores that um, cause the problems or have the hanging out. Um, so am, am I wrong? Are we tackling the stores that have the, the issues or are we tackling all of them? So um, according to the law department with Mr. Hawley, what he had said is that um, there is this red line district and these stores, you know, some of these stores, there's a lot of stores located in that district. If we change the legislation, we cannot just change it in one area, in one neighborhood, or specific stores. The legislation would be changed and it would affect the stores within that star or that rise area that has been designated. Um, the police call it a red line district. And within those red line districts, then that means the change would apply and everyone would have to shut down at 10 p.m., not just, you know, not just at midnight, you know, like some who maybe don't are not problematic would be allowed to stay open till midnight. So basically it would affect that whole map area that Mr. Hawley said he's sending so that we can take, um, you know, take a peek at that and see exactly what neighborhoods would be affected. It would not be citywide, but it would affect that red line area, which means that that is something to think about. There might be some non-problematic businesses that stay open later that do accommodate the community, uh, and then will that create an inconvenience for them to shut down at 10 p.m. when we're trying to um, fix a problem for the ones that are basically the nuisance ones. The best solution here really would be for these these properties to accumulate the points and then we would be able to maybe shut them down permanently um, because they're repeat offenders or to even look at their police reports and see what's going on there. Um, but that's, you know, that's <laughs> what I'm understanding. And Mr. Hawley, if if you need to add up, you know, add on to what I just said to answer Councilwoman Fields' uh, question please feel free. If not, we'll proceed with President Congo. Can I follow up, Madam Chair? Yes, you may. Okay, so I mean, if, I, mean I, I am all for this um, piece of legislation um, and I'm, you know, I know it, needs, it may need some tweaking or whatever, but um, I, I just think that we should um, look at the data and like you said, um, find out the actual properties that have the points and just and, and go that way versus trying to close everybody down because everybody's not bad but we also need to make we also need to put a piece of legislation out that if you have a store and you're in this community you should be giving back to the community because you take from the community so we should also be looking into having that conversation as well that's all madam chair thank you council um council president congo yes thank you madam chair it seems like we really need to focus on enforcement because if, if what Councilwoman Oliver said earlier about the stores are staying late or staying open later anyway, um, seems like it's, it's an enforcement issue, not necessarily a legislation issue. And if offer, we need to make sure that our officers are, are riding by to, you know, to make sure that these stores are closing whenever they're supposed to be closing and that, they're, that the, um, there's not a lot of loitering. So we just need to make sure that the police department is also in this conversation because we can change the hours, but if they're going to stay open later like they're doing anyway, it's all for nothing. And if the Lord is still going to be there just a little earlier, it still kind of defeats the purpose. So I just want to make sure that our police department is also on the same page. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And that is exactly the conversation um, that I had in a meeting with the mayor about neighborhood stabilization, that if we're going to proceed with stabilizing our neighborhoods, we have to make sure that the current laws are being enforced. Uh, the disorderly premises, uh, which is legislation that I had introduced where you actually get points on the property, but not just the property owner, the people who are engaged in disorderly behavior have to pay a citation. So maybe next time they'll think twice if you have to go to court, pay a fine every time that you're caught loitering, every time that there is a problem or a nuisance. But if our, if the enforcement isn't there, we can, write up all the legislation we want, but it's not going to make a difference. Now, the other thing that we could look at, um, Councilman Oliver, is um, excuse, that the mayor's suggestion yeah, was excuse me, point of, excuse me, point of order, Madam Chair, we're on ordinance 21-038, and it sounds like you're ready to start talking about a whole nother situation, and we're on ordinance 21-038. 
you know, Councilwoman, what I was going to say is that one of the suggestions that was made even by the mayor was on how we can maybe target specific stores by adding a residential aspect to it. So maybe that wouldn't cover the whole city, but we're still talking about this legislation. Thank you, ma'am. You're, you're last to speak um, unless anyone else has a question, then you proceed. You don't, is my hand not showing, Count Chairman? Uh, no, I don't see your hand. I see Councilwoman Oliver's hand up. Okay. Councilwoman Harley? Is that yeah. Your okay, yeah. okay. You can proceed. I'm sorry, your hand wasn't up. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Um, so, one, my original um, understanding of this legislation was that we were targeting the stores that the addresses were shared. That's number one, just those particular stores. And as we got more into the conversation, um, the law department or the gentleman, John, he gave us more clarity on what's happening here, which will include all the stores. Um, Council member McCoy mentioned that we already have legislation in place to address the, the times that these stores are supposed to close. So my first question is this, do we have the legislation already in place to do what council member Oliver is trying to do? That's my first question. Uh, Madam you. Chair, may I answer that, please? Yes, you may. Uh, um, Councilman Hardy, no, uh, Councilman McCoy was talking about um, the liquor stores that's already, we have legislation, she was referring to um, uh, Councilman Fields, we have legislation already in place regarding liquor stores. Oh, okay, thanks, and I have a follow-up, so thanks for answering that question. Okay, so secondly, um, if this le legislation passes, we basically saying that corner stores, gas stations, and retail within this particular boundary, all of those particular businesses have to close at 10 o'clock. Is that what would happen if this legislation passed? Um, yes, Councilman Marley. Okay, so one of the things that I wasn't aware of is that gas stations are included. And I know a number of us have gas stations um, in our districts. Like for example, I know over in Southbridge, the BP gas station over there um, stays open past 10 o'clock, of course. And so I guess, I, I guess my concern is that I, I didn't realize that this legislation was going to impact other businesses other than the ones that you were interested in addressing. That's number one. And then number two, I think we need the addresses of these businesses that are in this boundary that is being um, mentioned here, because I'll be perfectly honest with you. I was not aware that there were certain businesses that were in a certain boundary that were supposed to um, close at at a particular time. So if we could get a list of those particular businesses, I think that would be very, very helpful because I don't want us to have a backlash from the community because they were not made aware. And I'm just saying for me, I, I thought we were only talking about businesses, the businesses that council member Oliver mentioned those addresses when, the, when we first started. So I hope somebody's on staff or um, the appropriate person can provide us a, a list of the addresses of the businesses. I think we all would like, I would think we all could uh, benefit from having that information. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Member Hardley. I would ask um, the law department, Mr. Um, no, um, excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes, I'm going to. I'd like to see some, so we don't drag this no, out. I am going Thank to call you. on you. I'm going to call on you next. I was going to ask Mr. No, Hall great. to be prepared. I'm great. No, I'm great. I'm great. Put this to an end, so we don't drag this out if you don't mind. Okay, go ahead. Proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I've heard all the comments tonight, and what I'm going to do is put this legislation on hold because it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, 
when we went through this legislation and I did see the star um, uh, in section F and I did see the rise because I was really focused on so but with what the loophole is in here when it starts saying convenience stores that's how we kind of include the liquor store so I definitely don't want to close down anyone's liquor store I have a a uh, couple liquor stores in the well, I have a liquor store in the third district. So I will put this legislation, I would like to put this legislation on hold. So some um, council members, because I like what Councilman McCoy said when she said 11 o'clock, but also when we get into talking about closing down gas stations, that wasn't my focus for this particular uh, legislation. So we don't have to drag this out. I will put this legislation on hold to further for further conversation or um we had some I had some council members make some good suggestions so maybe y'all can email me and maybe we could you know tweak this legislation and come back but this wasn't about any liquor stores closing early you have people coming through the city all hours of night who do need gas but that's where the loophole came in because you know you start talking about the convenience stores and they are considered convenience stores so with that being said, I would like to put this legislation on hold. And also, um, I was just um, listening to the constituents, uh, the constituents that I serve who were, um, gave me a petition uh, between the two sides of town that had like 400 names on it that say they want these stores closed down. So then were the stores I were really focused on, but I can, I'm not able to do that um, without, um, um, stepping over boundaries of other uh, neighborhoods. So I do apologize, but it was good conversation tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Oliver. But your legislation, definitely the spirit of the legislation is excellent. And I think we, we do need to do something with um, the problem properties that we have in the city. So we are going to request um, that we get that map of the boundaries from the law department and that we can get an outline of all the businesses within that perimeter, I think um, that would be a great way to start. Uh, so thank, thank you. you everyone for a very healthy um, conversation and debate on that topic. And with that, we're gonna move on to ordinance 21-040, an ordinance to amend <laughs> chapter 48 of the city code regarding uses permitted in the W4 waterfront residential commercial zoning district and parking lot landscaping requirements for all waterfront zoning districts. Um, and council member Harley, would you like to speak to this please? Let's see here. So um, thank you, Madam Chair. I um, asked and requested from our chief of staff to make sure that the law department and who, whomever is requesting this to be done to be on the call. So can we see if someone from the law department um, is on the call to speak to this? Yes, council member, we do have uh, the Department of Planning and Development has a presentation to speak to this particular uh, ordinance. So if okay. we can get them to go ahead and present, I just wanted to make sure that you did the interlude um, uh, since it falls under you, but if we can get the Department of Planning and Development to go forward with their presentation at this time. Yes, that would be better. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Oh, you're welcome. Do we have um, the planning department? Someone from hi, the planning department? Hi, um, hi, council member. Um, I'm sorry, Chair Cabrera. This is Matthew Harris. I'm sorry, I was having some technically technical difficulties and I got booted out of the meeting. I was on for the entire discussion about the stores and then right when it was my time, I got booted off. No so worries, I apologize for that. So I am back. Um, so my apologies to the no um, committee. Well, you may proceed, the floor is yours. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so my name is Matthew Harris and I'm, um, one of the city planners with the Department of Planning. And the first thing that I wanted to just um, say is thank you to the committee for having me tonight. And I wanted to present a piece of legislation um, that we've been working with in planning and with law to all of you this evening. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do was just correct something that you see on your screen here. It says ordinance-0086. And I'm sorry, when I got the ordinance from law, that was the number that I saw, but I don't think that that is the correct ordinance number. So it is actually ordinance 21-040. So that is what I'm addressing this evening. Um, I just wanted to be clear. 
So what that ordinance is, is a proposed amendments to chapter 48 of our zoning code as follows. To amend section 48.316 definitions to define drive-through facilities, amend section, section 48.339 W4 districts to prohibit drive-through facilities, limit the size of printing plants, light manufacturing and other places of business, and prohibit exterior and outdoor wholesale storage uses. And we're going to amend section 48.523 applicability of landscaping requirements to address parking lot landscaping requirements in the waterfront districts. Now I know that was a a lot of information. So I'm gonna walk everyone through each piece um, and then you know, I think it'll become more clear. So a little bit of background, um, the Department of Planning has been working to incrementally update our city zoning code. Um, there are a number of things that are outdated and we've been trying to work through those. I'm gonna address some of those issues. Looks like Mr. Harris may have frozen on us. Yep. We can refer to the screen and read through this until he gets. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my, I don't know if it's my connection. Um, so this is the first step in a number of updates that will be reviewed and proposed by the Department of Planning. The amendments are designed to amend the W4 Waterfront Residential Zoning District to reflect and encourage mixed use development and encourage land use patterns consistent with the urban context. So in short, what we're doing here is we're looking to define drive-through facility. We're gonna um, then look to prohibit uh, drive-through facilities in our waterfront W4 district. Um, we're also looking to limit the size of light industrial uses to 5,000 square feet. Um, we're going to be prohibiting outdoor wholesale storage, and we're also going to re be removing an exception of parking lot landscaping in the waterfront district. So the first um, amendment that we're making is the creation of a definition that we're going to be adding to our W4 district, which is to, draw, to define drive-through facility. So I just wanna read this to everyone because I think it's a really important piece of the legislation. So a drive-through facility means a facility which accommodates automobiles and from which the occupants of the automobiles may make purchases or transact business, including the stacking spaces in which automobiles wait. Examples include, but are not limited to drive up windows, menu boards, order boards, or boxes, drive in restaurants, drive up banks, and automated television teller machines and drive up pharmacies. Drive-through facilities shall not include the parking spaces used for customer pickup or loading of goods or products purchased on site or prior to the customer's arrival or parking and loading spaces used for the donation of secondhand goods. So the rationale behind this amendment is that this amendment adds a formal definition of drive-through facility, which we currently don't have to our W4 district um, in the waterfront section of the zoning code. This definition shall be used later in other sections to define and prohibit the use in the W4 Waterfront Residential Zoning District. So now that we have defined drive-through, um, what we are looking to do is to then prohibit that use, um, prohibit the, I should say, the drive-through element of that in our W4 district. So you can see here, and I've underlined the sections that it specifically A slight freeze again. Mm -hmm. Well, since we are hosting meetings in person, we're going to have to um, invite our presenters to be here in person, and we won't get the the technical difficulties that we've had to endure through the the era of Zoom, as convenient as it is, and it has allowed us to continue to stay connected. It comes yep, with um, its challenges. I am back. 
Are you back? Thank you, Matt. I am back. I'm sorry. Okay, so next slide, please. You were discussing the types of facilities. Oh, okay. All right, good. I thought that it was a discussion about my connection problems, which I really apologize for. Yeah. Um, was there a question? Because I, I don't mind stopping in the middle of my presentation. Well, I think you were going down the list. I think we were going to number five, office, bank. That That's the sheet that we were on, the types of drive through facilities. Okay, then let's hop back a slide and we can go through that. Yeah, so it's office, bank, or other financial institution. So that's kind of like drive through banks, like things you would see on 202 maybe, um, or Route 13. Um, a retail store and service. Um, so that could be like a pharmacy, for instance, at like a Walgreens. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps like a restaurant or a lunchroom. So you could probably think of something that would be more traditional, like a drive through restaurant. Like you could say like a McDonald's or like a Chick-fil-A or even a Starbucks. They have drive through elements. So. So the rationale is that this amendment specifically identifies and amends the matter of right uses in the W4 waterfront residential district in which the drive through facilities are prohibited. This amendment does not prohibit the use of restaurants or lunchrooms or office banks or financial institutions in the W4 district. It just prohibits the drive through element. Um, and that's something that I really want to um, be specific about because it was important to us in planning when we were thinking about how this will work out. You know, we don't want to exclude any use um, in our waterfront district. We want to welcome everyone, but we do want to encourage the type of physical development that encourages a pedestrian friendly environment. So then we have the proposed amendment to limit light industrial uses to 5,000 square feet in the W4. So you can see um, under so it's A, the purpose of the W4 district, and then B, the uses permitted as a matter of Give me a minute because he usually comes back to us. Okay, Matt, you're back. You're not. Yep. Okay, so on the next slide, there are additional uses. So then we have uses permitted under zoning board of adjustment approval. So it's light manufacturing provided that no highly flammable explosives processes are employed. And again, that's limited to 5,000 square feet or less per approved use. And then number 11 here, it, it lists a whole variety of things and you can see them there. Um, and they just limit that use to 5,000 square feet. Now, the rationale behind this is that this amendment specifically identifies and amends the matter of right uses and uses permitted with zoning board of adjustment approval to limit light industrial uses to 5,000 square feet. This amendment does not prohibit the use of light industrial uses in the W4 district. However, they should be limited in size as the primary purpose of the district is the development of residential, commercial, and office uses. While light industrial uses are permitted in the district, the use should be limited in scale to further the primary purpose of the W4 residential commercial district. So then we have the proposed amendment to prohibit outdoor storage in W4. Um, and again, we have the purpose of the W4 uses permitted under zoning board of adjustment. And then you can see we say wholesale storage and then we, ex and then we say excluding outdoor storage. So people can store things inside their buildings, inside a warehouse, just not outside. We just don't wanna see things being stored um, in, within view. Councilmember Harley. Yes, I had a question for John on slide probably eight or nine, but I'll wait for him um, to come back. And I'm also curious to know if he 
<laughs> if he could probably, if he has a issue with his connection in the whole area where he is, or if there's a possibility he can go in another room. Uh, let's suggest that when he comes back on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't know that there's anyone else who could speak to this at this point. My, I'm, I'm back. I'm, I apologize. Okay, you, you know, I don't know what's happening because I didn't get booted off for the entire store discussion. And that was like 45 minutes long. So I don't understand. Um, but I do promise counsel, this is the last time I'll try and do this from my home. I will just stay at the office. And then... is there a uh -huh. <laughs> He's on his phone. No, he said from home. He, he's, oh. not in the, he's not at the city council oh. building. Okay, he's at home. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I was left all alone in the chambers. Oh, let's see. Madam Chair, is there anyone else from the planning department on this call that could speak to it? I do not see anyone else on here. I just have a, Mr. Hawley from the law department. That's it. Checking to see. Okay, so I tried to move to a different spot in my house. And I'm, I'm hoping that that maybe works out a little better. Also, I think what I'm gonna do is stop my video. I'm wondering if that might also do something. Yeah, just speak, speak. To yep, me. I'm just gonna speak. Okay, so yes, um, next slide, please. Oh, could we move to the next slide? Okay, so. I believe there was one slide before this one. Ah, here we go. I'm sorry. So the, the last amendment that we're doing is we're, so currently our waterfront districts are exempt from any parking lot landscaping requirements. And what we're doing is we're removing that exception. So you'll see here, it says, um, after such effective date, if located in a zoning district, except M2 general industrial and waterfront districts. So we're just removing that. We want to have landscaping parking lot landscaping apply in our waterfront zoning districts. Next slide, please. So again, this just explains, um, you know, why we're doing that. It says, given that many waterfront districts border waterways, parking lot landscaping will advance the city's resiliency goals. As such, stormwater capture, increasing tree canopy, and reducing heat island effect associated with service parking lots. New parking lots developed in any waterfront district will now be required to meet screening, tree tree, and interior landscaping requirements. Next slide, please. So here's the last slide. So the Department of Planning is just recommending the approval of the ordinance. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I will be happy to answer them at this time. And I'm sorry that I'm speaking quickly. I just don't want my connection to cut out again. Council Member Harley, do you have your hand raised from the last time or do you want to start with a question? Yes, I want to start with the question. So thank you, um, John, for the overview of this legislation um, because I too was wanting to hear all of the particulars and the details as it relates to um, the um, intent behind it. So my, my first question is this, is, is this consistent with other areas that um, are similar to what is going on at the riverfront and what is going to take place? So the things that we are um, discussing in this legislation, is this routine, is this standard for this kind, these particular areas?
Matt, are you with us? Frozen. I was mad. Sorry, I'll call him John. That's okay. <laughs> Matt, Matt, are you back yet? I have a couple questions as well. Did that answer come through? No. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I said that it's consistent with all the areas that we have that are like waterfront districts, but not necessarily, it doesn't apply citywide. It's just in our W4 districts. And I think that's largely because there's so much potential for redevelopment in our waterfront district and we have so much vacant land. So in looking at that, you know, it's to develop it, you know, in an urban way and just encourage an urban context. Thank you. Follow up, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, you may. Yes. Okay. So I think that was a very important um, question for me um, because a lot of times, if it's something that has not been done before and individuals don't know it's consistent with other areas, then it could seem like, you know, more questions could come up. But if it's consistent um, with other areas, I know that we're going to be building up or um, the east side, yeah, the east side of the riverfront, then it, it definitely makes sense. So um, thank you for answering that question. And I had a question on sli slide eight where it talked about the excluding. I just wanna make sure I'm interpreting those points correctly. Where it mentions the banks Maybe it's like seven, the one before that. Yes. Okay. Let's see. What's the, okay. All right. I just want to make sure I'm interpreting five, six, and 16 um, correctly. So where it says excluding drive-through facility, meaning, can you just explain that again? So you just, I'm sorry, I can't hear. So you need to repeat it. I didn't hear anything. Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. No, that's fine. So you you want some clarity on what five, six, and sixteen mean? Is that what? Okay. So my interpretation is that if this is a office bank or other financial institute, they can have a drive-through, or and if it's a retail store, a certain type of restore and service they can have a drive-through and if it's a restaurant, they can have a drive-through. That's the way I'm interpreting it. That's what I'm trying to get clarity about. Bank or financial institution, you can have that, but you cannot have the drive-through element of that, if that makes sense. So you mm -hmm. can have a retail store and service, but not a drive-through element. Um, okay. You can also have a restaurant. So you could have a, so say you could have like a storefront McDonald's, but not a McDonald's with a drive through Got it. Okay. I just needed clear, clarity on that. So thank you. You're welcome. And thanks for hanging in with me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I um, do have a couple questions. One, I was going to ask about the drive through and why is that seen as an impediment to have in a W-4 waterfront residential district? Why is that an issue? Because with, especially with the convenience of drive-throughs and people coming to pick up food to go with everything we've experienced with COVID, you know, it's people don't get out of their cars to get things, you know, uh, so why would that be, I guess, what, why would that be a problem in a W-4 waterfront residential district? 
when we have them scattered throughout the city and other districts. I don't know if you heard my question. What it, what it does is it, it's really just trying to encourage the type of land uses because with the drive-through you have a lot more curb cuts, you have a lot more traffic moving. And what we're trying to do is just create a very pedestrian friendly environment Whereas a drive-through, while, while a totally valid use and is convenient, it's not necessarily urban in context. So um, like the urban would be, we want kind of like businesses in the bottom of, of buildings, you know, that you walk into connected sidewalks, safety, you know, a drive-through kind of is the opposite of, of what you'd want to see in an urban context. Okay. So that's sense. what we're really getting at. Not that we're saying that they're not valuable or that they're not convenient because we understand that they are. It's just when it comes from a land use design, it's probably not what we should be seeing or encouraging in the city. Okay, I understand. More like in a suburban area, like on 202 when we see them there. Exactly. Um, the, the next uh, question was gonna be the parking. So what I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, it means that the requirements for parking in these areas they need to meet certain requirements. Does that mean we're gonna push for more green parking venues where you have the water you know, goes down, where you have the greening? Uh, can you explain that? I mean, that sounds good to me. I just wanna make sure that's clear that you're saying that moving forward, any new development in a W4 uh, residential area would require green parking. You with us, Matt? Well, if we don't get him back, I can always get my question answered um, later. I don't want to delay the meeting anymore. We had technical challenges. So it would. So it would, so it would require. Day. So it would require, yeah, like street trees. You could do islands with stormwater capture, these types of things. And for some reason, I don't know why, it, it has to speak to earlier in my presentation when I said our zoning code is kind of outdated in some respects. Um, you know, that's one of those respects where our waterfront districts were taken out of that and they didn't have parking lot landscaping review. So currently everywhere else in the city, they do. So now we're just bringing those waterfront districts into that. Thank you for answering that question. Are there any other questions from city council? I do not see any hands raised from the members of the public. All right, well, at this point, um, we do not have any other agenda items and we are going to conclude this off this meeting. I thank everyone that joined us today and thank you for the lively uh, discussion. Um, and we hope that you join us again next month. Uh, at the That's why my was this yes. voted out of committee? Um, my apology. Oh, oh you know, did you actually, make them? No, I did not put it in for a vote. I am so sorry about that. Yeah. And if point, I can, if I, Councilman, mm -hmm. I'm I'm sorry, Chairwoman, Chairwoman Cabrera. Also, um, just so everyone knows, this will require a public hearing, and that information will be coming out soon. I, I believe it's possibly October the seventh, but I don't want to misspeak. Okay, so October seventh, there will be a public hearing on this. And now I need a motion to move this out of committee. I make a motion to move it out of committee. Can I get a second? Second. Uh, all in favor, respond by saying aye. Aye. Committee members? I only have one aye. Do we have any other committee members voting for or against? I'm, I'm voting against. This is Councilwoman Darby. And yay, any other members of the committee? I'm a nay, Councilwoman Cabrera. Yes, I got you. Councilwoman I'm sorry, Darby's my phone went out. I uh, need, I got a vote from McCoy. I need a vote from Councilman Fields. 
Councilman Field. For myself, I will vote nay. Yay. Yes. I mean, yes. Okay. Who, Councilman who Field. Councilman Fields. Okay. I got Councilman Fields. Okay. So we have um, three yays and one nay. Councilman Field, are you still there? Let me get a vote from him. Okay. Well, with that, we have three yeas and one nay, so it will be uh, moved out of committee and before the next, uh, they're going to have a public meeting October 7th before it makes it to council. At this point, uh, without any other questions, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. And this concludes uh, the meeting of the uh, Community Development and Urban Planning Committee. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.